All right, so now I'm gonna walk you through the framework that I would use to answer the prompt. How would you improve YouTube? I would call this the three W's, what it is, why I like it, ways to improve it. That is a structured way I'm going to respond to this prompt to the interviewer. So if they ask me, Marcus, how would you improve YouTube? First thing I'm gonna do is say, awesome, I like to take a few minutes to gather my thoughts. And then I'm going to start to put together my framework. Remember, this is different from a normal interview where you're expected to answer the question as soon as it's asked. For a product manager interview, the worst thing you can do is jump in and start trying to answer the question. You need to take time to gather your thoughts to have a structured approach to answering the question before you just engage in a conversation. So again, I'm gonna ask for one to two minutes to gather my thoughts. And then I'm gonna go down to each of these sections and start to list my ideas. But let's go through my ideas at, as if I was presented to the interviewer. And then afterwards, I'm gonna come back and just critique my answer to that question. Thank you for giving me a few minutes to gather my thoughts. I'm gonna use this structured approach to answer the prompt. First, I wanna talk about what is YouTube, why I like it, and then lastly, the ways to improve it. How does that sound? All right, so first, what is YouTube? YouTube is a video sharing plat a social media platform. And their mission is all about everyone has a voice, share it, broadcast yourself to the world. Their business model is all about ad revenue. So ads are placed either before, during, or after a video depending on whether you are a uh, just a base customer or they do offer a premium service, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. In terms of, um, so they have the ad revenue. Another revenue stream is subscriptions. So I mentioned the, the premium service. So they, they offer YouTube premium, which I'm actually a, a customer. I, don't, I, can't, <laughs> I cannot live without YouTube premium. And it has a lot of cool features, which I'll break down in a little bit, but that's another revenue stream. In terms of who uses YouTube, use, uh, some user groups that I believe are on the platform, podcasters, people that have a platform on Apple Podcasts or um, Spotify, they also upload those on YouTube so they can continue to bring their audience to all different platforms. Influencers, these are folks that have a huge following on Instagram, TikTok, they also will post vlogs on YouTube, maybe longer form content, they'll come to YouTube and add that there. Students looking to understand what classes should I take or just finding information about college or life. Young professionals trying to advance their careers can go on YouTube to understand interview tips, how to negotiate job offers, just seeking that information for their professional career. Also DIY warriors. These are folks that are every weekend, they have a project and they look, they're look they looking for inspiration and they'll come to YouTube to get that. And then lastly, those how-to seekers. You might have um, a fire TV stick and you're trying to figure out how to, how to restart it or how to reset um, my laptop. Those how-to, very simple questions, come to YouTube for that. How does, how does that sound so far? All right, now let's talk about why I like YouTube. YouTube Premium, that's it. When that thing launched years ago, I was a super early adopter, mainly because I would be listening to things on YouTube and if I went to another app or if I was working out, I couldn't close that browser. So the, the ability to play back that, to have YouTube going in the background and I can multitask, change everything. You also can download content and watch it. Think you're on an airplane. You don't have Wi-Fi service. You can still watch those videos with YouTube Premium as a member. You have that feature. Also, no ads. I can watch the full vlog of Karen and Nate with no ads like that. That's a big deal for me. Also the creator studio, I'm also a creator. I create content on YouTube and there's a, there's a specific app that allows me to manage my business, get the analytics and see how things are trending. So I love that. The recommendations, incredible. The algorithm on YouTube gives me access to videos I wasn't even think of, thinking of, but based on my, my engagement on the platform, it'll serve up very relevant targeted recommendations. The last thing, YouTube music. Again, because of my behavior on the platform, when I go to YouTube Music, they'll create these customized, personalized playlists just for me based on my listening behavior, and they always hit huge fan of YouTube Music. Any questions about why I like 
YouTube. All right, now let's finish with ways to improve YouTube. First, monetization. As I mentioned, I'm a creator. I create content on YouTube and other platforms, but I feel like it's an opportunity to really enhance the monetization rules. Right now, you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours within one year. If you're leaning everyone to YouTube Shorts, which is the focus for the company now, those are 60 seconds or less. It's gonna be really hard to get the 4,000 watch hours. Now, I do realize recently they added another criteria where you can have 1,000 subscribers and 10 million YouTube Shorts. Again, depending on the niche, it could be challenging to get to 10 million. So maybe there's a way to look at, look at other metrics beyond those three to four to see if, if you can offer smaller or up and coming channels an opportunity to monetize their content. I also think there's an opportunity to add a repeat feature. So there are songs, there are videos um, or TED Talks that I will watch and want to replay that, but I'm not able to replay that in a loop. I think there should be a feature that allows me to say, okay, it's clear this is a song that you always listen to. Is there a way for me to have that on a replay? So I think there should be a capability there where I can either hit a button saying, hey, I want to replay this. And then maybe the the app can say if, if there's no engagement on the mobile app within X minutes, then it will shut it down or stop the video. But that's something I haven't seen before, but I would highly recommend a re repeat feature for content that you watch on a daily basis and you're going to go back to other one is family sharing this is a personal one here so i have youtube premium my wife has her own youtube page and i've been trying to share that you're you're able to share that with your family and friends but the experience is really challenging um, i've had to remove her from my family group and then re-add her and then try to share youtube premium with her it is not happening. There's a huge opportunity there to be able to make it easier for YouTube premium members to share it with their family. Um, storage. The storage is something that um, if you're a YouTube premium member, you can download um, content from YouTube, but it takes up storage. And before I knew it, I had 20, 30 gigabytes of storage dedicated to YouTube because I was downloading a lot of content that I can watch when I'm traveling. Well, I think there needs to be a way to incorporate YouTube Premium with those that have um, Google Photos or some of the, the cloud products that Google offers so that I can store that stuff in the cloud so it doesn't take up a lot of storage on my device, which can be a challenge. And I hate to go in and have to, uh, like, for example, as a creator, if I'm editing something on my iPhone and my storage from YouTube is so high, just yesterday I had to go and remove a lot of the downloaded content from YouTube to free up space to finish editing my video. And lastly, library purchases is another personal one. Say for example, you purchase um, Black Panther 2 on YouTube. You can buy that, you can rent it or buy it. Depending on the profile that you're signed in on, it stays there. As I mentioned, I have a creator account, Coach Roundtree, which you're watching this on now, but I also have a personal account where all of my movies that I purchased are there. Well, I made the mistake and bought Black Panther through my Coach Roundtree creator pro profile. Well, that movie stays there. So if I, anytime I want to watch Black Panther, I had to go into the other account and sometimes I have to stream it or mirror the, the TV. So there should be a way to consolidate all of your purchases across your, ver your various profiles so that you're not having to log into one specific account in order to access it. Whew, it's no joke. These product manager interviews are no joke. And imagine if you have this prompt and you have to interview multiple people. So it takes a lot of mental capacity and energy for these product manager interviews. But let's break down my framework. So I started with what? What is so important? Because you want to demonstrate that you have um, the strategic insight and understanding of the products and services of the company that you're interviewing with, or it could be the market overall. Like the, the question, um, how would you improve YouTube? I was asked that at a startup. The startup had nothing to do with YouTube, but they wanted to understand if I knew the market, if I understood tech companies. So one pro tip is research companies that have um, applications or products that have at least 1 billion users. So think about all the Google. Google has seven or eight products that have at least one billion users. 
Um, Facebook just had a, um, a mouse on the 3 billion people on their family of apps. So those big dog products, you need to understand them. So, but starting with the what shows, you, you know, you, you understand the market. I started with what the product is. I talked about the mission. The mission is really important. Always look for the mission statement or it doesn't have to be word for word, but generally why that product exists and how, what's its purpose. You want to communicate that. The business model. You should know how the product makes money. I talked about the ad revenue and also the subscription. And then some product managers will, will stop there. You definitely want to always have a section for users. This is a way for you to be creative and show that you're thinking outside of the box. Like a DIY warrior. It's not something that um, you would think of naturally on YouTube, but this is your way to show that you can segment audiences across the specific platform. Next section is why I like it. This, this section is really important because you want to show your personal experience with the product, that you've actually engaged with the product, and you can bring forth. It really sets the stage for some of the ways to improve it. So, Again, if you're interviewing at Google or Meta, um, Amazon, make sure you, you, you actually go through and look at some of their top products and be, be a user. Understand the UI, understand the products and services that they offer so that you can speak to that when you're asked to improve something like YouTube. So I am a YouTube premium member, so I can speak about that candidly as a user. I talked about the creator studio for my content business as a content creator, the recommendation. So I'm giving you ideas of what's working right now. Everything is not wrong with the product. They wouldn't have billions of users if it was. And then that leads me to the ways and improve it. And I think this is really important because depending on the interviewer, they may double click on some of these and these ways to improve could become a full on product design or product sense conversation where you're actually saying, okay, well, let's let's talk about the repeat feature. How would you build that? So don't just put things up here that you um, you haven't thought through or um, have something that you have conviction or passion about because you may be asked to build it. Um, repeat feature is something that I want on YouTube personally as a user, family sharing. And I have personal anecdotes of things that I experienced as a user. Those are powerful because that's something that gets the interview excited about solving that problem. But but team, this is probably the part one of a longer term series on product management. In the comments, feel free to ask me any questions if any of this doesn't make sense. Again, I listed that product alliance link in the description as well as the comments. Highly recommend it, it changed everything. I walked into my Google interview so confident and my feedback from the interviewer to my recruiter was phenomenal and this framework is what I learned from that course. So I do believe it's worth the investment to be able to not only pass your interview, but how you continue to grow as a product manager. Please give me a thumbs up, follow or subscribe, and make sure you share this content with anybody you know that's interested in product management. On my channels and profiles, I post interview tips and career advice to help you elevate your game. I'll see you next time.